sounds that, that my wife makes. It's sensational. So, I've got this. Thanks, by the way. You know who. You know uh, who. Thank you so much for this. Come on. <laughs> uh, please turn around. Bend over. <laughs> uh, do you want it in the same oh place? Oh, my God. Yes, please. So, a friend of ours sent this to us. Um, was it last Christmas? It's great, isn't it? Mark, put it on. <laughs> it's annoying. Ah! Go down a bit. Down a bit. Okay. I have, you know when you wake up and you've got that really annoying... Oh, down a bit. No, Mark, you're not concentrating. It was very hard. I thought we were going live. I didn't think I was becoming a medical... Ah! Ah! Right. An osteopath. Now, these things... I would never have bought... I would never have thought of buying one of these. But, my God, they are a godsend. Go down a bit. Down a bit. And you can quite often, my uh, trainer was saying to me, you can quite often get them second hand on eBay because people buy them second and then they can't be bothered with them. That. That's right, go up, go up. You can medi wipe it. I've, got, I've done my shoulder, it's so well, annoying. Clearly you've done your shoulder. Could you have chosen a better time to do this? <laughs> Jesus, there was, me getting, me, there was me getting our running order in, in place and suddenly I'm thrust given a vibrator and told to use That's it. because I thought I would show people. <laughs> <laughs> and they come with all different heads. Just so I've heard. So There's I've one heard. the size you could put up your bottom if you were that way inclined. What do you mean so many people are that way I inclined? I bet some people would do <clears throat> that. Of course they would. What, what world do you live in? Was it that posted yesterday that you could get a ferret? It was a really weird thing. That a ferret can get into... An anus. Yeah, did you see that post? It, it was a thing, it was a big thing in the day. Gerbils and ferrets and hamsters. No, because they can, is that, is, that's right. An anus can stretch to seven inches without damage. <laughs> I'm so pleased, I bet you're really pleased you're eating your <laughs> breakfast here. Anyone having their Cheerios? I bet you're feeling very Cheerio now, aren't you? Or was it 14 <laughs> inches? 14 inches? Maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it was seven. But there was something to do with that and ferrets. Babe, 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 babe. Whose Instagram was it? I don't know, but I mean, I'm no, amazed it's, it's legal. Well, don't, they didn't say it was legal. What about the fact that I don't think it's nice ferrets and ferrets and Oh, anyway, I've digressed. I've digressed. Digressed is the, not the word for it. Don't, don't. Just ignore everything I'm saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, do not try this at home. I mean, 14 inches, yes, no. That's you don't get wrong. much more digression than 14 inches stretch. That was wrong. It was seven. Okay, darling. <laughs> So random, says Dawn Clericoats. Guys, uh, apologies, turds, says Iona Pouch. Uh, well, yeah. um, so, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope everyone's okay. Sorry for the uh, slight distraction of a vibrator and a stretched anus. Well, it's not anus. a vibrator, it's a muscle massage. But it vibrates. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about a vibrator again in a minute. We're oh. going to be talking about one called... Well, okay, so Apt maybe people want to leave now. <laughs> it, well, we'll talk about that later. It's aptly called the Lioness. The Lioness. Um... So yes, so how is everyone? How are you all? <laughs> Good morning, Raspberry Mojito Girl, Helen Very Rowe, Corshi's Adventure, Fiona Reed, Louise Pudney, um, Patricia Brackenridge, fa fabulously solid name there. Stuart G, how are you? Oh, Stuart G, <laughs> too much information. <laughs> Faith Goodman, um, Julie Everts, morning Mark and Nads, talking about holes, Ty typical combo here. Yeah? <laughs> it's a standard opener. <laughs> See what I did there? Standard opener. Um, I really don't, they don't know do this how on I this got morning. to that. That's what they all say. I can't remember what the when they end up was. in when they end up in A and E. They say, I don't know "Mark, stop time. now! Now you've gone too far." Do you know what the biggest animal ever found up a bottom is? What? No, don't. It's not nice. It's not a nice way to talk to people. It's a turtle. Oh, a turtle. Oh my god! Did you see my roots just then, guys? Jesus, so bad. How far is Nad's looking, guys? It's funny because I don't feel fat. No, I know you don't. I know you don't. And uh, I can tell. Mm. I love you. You look gorgeous. Um, this was all stretching 14 inches. Ah! <laughs> no. No, genuinely. Uh, you do. You look lovely. Thank you. So do you. You look gorgeous, oh, doesn't he? About that. Lisa said to me yesterday how gorgeous you're looking. Did you? Oh, right. Okay, thanks, Lee. 
Love your hair, love your skin, love you so wow. slim. Wow. Gosh. So slim. Fantastic. Oh, I'm going to go on the pool tonight. Mm. Uh, I am actually out, out on the pool tonight. Um, she does look lovely and very brown, doesn't she, Louise Pudney? Zoe Agnew, Nadia is always gorgeous. Yeah, but, you know, we can't keep telling her, Zoe, so every now and then we like to tell her. And when we do, it sometimes happens in coffee. And her goal is that. Um, can I just say, firstly, I just want to say this, because this is, this is a guy, this character, this person, sadly, who's passed away this morning, was a huge part, actually, of my childhood. Raymond Briggs has passed away oh. um, at the age of I eight. thought you were going to say the Pogues. No, oh. no, there's the Pogues. <laughs> Opposite ends of the culture. Yeah, I literally did. I thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I just saw about yeah, this. Yeah, no, 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 the Pogues bass player, I think, was it? Um, Raymond Briggs, obviously, who did um, oh, yeah. the, the Father Christmas, the Snowman. But for me... I've never seen him. Yeah, that was him when he was younger. Oh, does he look terribly? It looks, well, of course. Marvellous. I mean, you could tell from the illustrations he was possibly yeah. terrible. Now, for me, Fungus the man. Bogeyman. Fungus the Bogeyman, for me, the reason this was so important when I got Fungus the Bogeyman as a boy. I never knew this. Fungus the Bogeyman. That's the first time I've ever seen You him. never heard of Fungus I the love Bogeyman? Them. No, who are they? They look Oh, great. he did a book like the Father Christmas book, like the Snowman. Oh. And my na I insisted to my nan and granddad that they buy me it. And the reason it was so important to me, it was the first time I realised the potential shock value of, of, of anything for my nan and granddad. Because my nan would forever say when I was reading it, oh, that's disgusting, because they're made of bogeys. You know, it's all sticky and it's all bogey oh. And so I, I loved the fact that whenever I was reading it, my nan would get, get really cross and really intolerant. Well, that's intolerant. what kids love in a book, yeah, isn't yeah. a bit of anarchy. So he may have been quite posh, but he was, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the snowman. How old was he? And riding through the 88, I believe, riding through the air, flying through the air. Imagine, imagine being responsible for giving so many children joy, it's all, magic, it, that's magical exactly it. Christmas. And not the chip, just the children, the parents. Do you remember that? Would you remember that year when we went, oh, let's all watch Father Christmas, Snowman? Yeah. And your nan ruined it for the rest of our lives. Well, what did she say? Because we all sat down and she said to Ke she said to Maddie, oh, it's so boring, wind, wind isn't blow. it, love? So boring, isn't it? Yeah. And then we filmed it. And we you all sat, settled in for a magical Christmas was when, Eve. Was when the wind blows, that wasn't one about a nuclear bomb, was it? Yes. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a, I mean, he was it quite... Was, it was quite sad. It was quite... I mean, he... I worry that do we have these kind of, you know, illustrator slash storyteller slash kids book writers like we used to have. There's such an industry of books. You know, it's such an industry now, isn't it? I mean, if you've got half, half a, I don't know, half an apple, you know, half a kind of English degree, you can write a book, a children's book. I mean, every, there are children's books coming out all the time, but then... The, the, but because, so many of them are terrible. Yeah, exactly. And back in the day, because only a few would come out, they would stand out, you know. So, um, yeah, it terrified me as well. And it's funny, isn't it, with children's books, how, yeah, it's just... It would capture. It would just capture. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then they can be really bad. Um, I just want to read this out, Mark. You're very, very keen to push this away, but no, I want to read this. Time for a rhyme, personalised poetry, Kirsty Wilson. Hello. Nads, I'm 37. I've got I'm rid of my stinking thinking. I've lost two stone five pounds through fasting, and I'm so proud of myself. I'm going to be fab at 40. You are fab oh. already. That's Kirstie incredible. Well but don't forget the stinking thinking journey is continuous. You have to keep on working it. But, oh, that's really... To lose two stone five well pounds is bloody hard. Bloody hard. To lose every pound yeah. is hard. So well done you. Yeah, well done, well done. I yeah. need some inspiration actually. Welcome, guys. Tracy Liner. I've got Good right. To you, I've got right. I've gone. I haven't been very. Faith Goodman. It's funny you should mention. Sorry, to interrupt. Faith Goodman. That's where scary books comes in because mm. uh, they're not really scary books. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Yes, like you say, imagine being almost semi-responsible for the creation of Father yeah. Christmas. I mean, he's, yeah. he's responsible for something that's become a tradition, hasn't it? Sort of it's like, do you remember the tiger that came to tea? Yeah, very well. That's just one of those books. Now, it's all right. It's a nice book. Oh, don't but get me why wrong. Why has it I... just passed through the generations in the way that it has? What is it that captured people about the tiger that came to tea? Because let's face it, it's bloody ridiculous. I think one of the problems with nearly everything in life now, what do you think, guys? This is a kind of cultural discussion, is there is oversaturation of everything. Yeah. And because there's a... I mean, here's a small example. Here's a small example. Um, you know, Disney discovered much to their horror that if you start churning Star Wars films out every year, suddenly people lose interest. Well, Kel yeah, Surprise, you know. Yeah. What worked in our generation was if you have three or five years, three to five years between things, it allows it to percolate in the imagination. 
uh, and it allows you to kind of, you know, you think about the characters, you think, and that's what, that, that's what worked with Star Wars. It's what's working with the Guardians of the Galaxy, shortly. I think that's why that works. And I think it's what will work with the remake of the second film, Joker. Everyone's frustrated it's not coming until 2024. I think that's a really good thing, because I think it will make it all the richer. Mm. And I think that with books and with series and with shows, we are in oversaturation mode. So there isn't the opportunity for one book to stand out for a period because there's 6,000 yeah, other books being it. released exactly the next week. And everyone's yeah. so hungry to move on to the next best thing. You know, nothing really yeah. sits. But, uh, but that's Raymond Briggs, who died at the age of 88. Are you a bastard? Are you a bastard? Nope. I'm not a bastard. Can you believe that that's even, even a thing? Do people ever... So, about. did you, I mean, I always remember, oh, here's a, a, before we move on to bastardry, Anya, HRT question, hi Nadia, do you know whether the new oestrogen made from yam <coughs> is safe for people who've had breast cancer? The doctor told me my mum, she can't go on HRT and gave her vitamin D instead. <laughs> you, um, you know, I'm on the yam, medical. I'm on the yam oestrogen. Of course, I'm in no way, I mean, I just take HRT and I, and I know a lot about HRT. But the person to ask this question of, and there is, there's huge debate on this at the moment. In fact, I had a long conversation with my HRT doctor the other day on behalf of my friends with breast cancer about um, hormone replacement therapy. Tell your mum to go to the Louise Newson menopause doctor website. Tell your mum to also follow on Instagram at the titty gritty, or is it real titty gritty? At Titty Gritty, my friend Titty Gritty, because she's done a number of um, lives talking to people, doctors that have different opinions. That she did, she did a live the other day with KD Lang, who has actually made a decision to go on HRT. Well, I thought it was going to be her, but then it wasn't. I think oh. it was somebody else. Oh. That she was a journalist. Oh. Anyway, so so there's lots of differing opinions, and the best thing is go to a doctor that's willing to give you all the information and then for your mum to make the decision as to whether it's right for her. Um, that would be my advice. But those are the people I would say to look, to, to, to look at. Dr. Louise Newson, Titty Gritty, and um, on the Menopause Doctors website, there's so much information there for your mum. Great. Um, me too, just a sidebar note. You're absolutely right about Marvel. They're very clever at that. Um, mentioning a book that you're reading, The World's Worst Assistant. I'm, a, I'm aware that only the members will have seen the book re uh, recommendation I gave in the No Name Sunday show, which was on Monday. Uh, but for those of you who don't watch it, but do read The Harpy. It's a really good book. It's a, it's a really compelling what? book about a woman who discovers her husband's having an affair. Uh, and then she agrees that she's got three ways to hurt him back uh, as kind of, you know... I want to read that. Uh, it's very short. It's written in bite-sized chunks, so it's really, really swimming pool side amenable. So you can sort of read a bit, jump in, read a bit, you know, all that kind of stuff. So check it out. Me too. So what's this? The world's worst assistant. Very funny. Oh, oh right. By Sona Movisessian. I think Thank you. Should, uh, we're, I'm toying with some kind of concept somewhere on the channel where we have a, what I call a culture vulture, which is an opportunity to set, talk about... Things that are coming up, things that are out, but also all your recommendations too, a kind of notice board of recommendations. Because I think that's one of the richest things you can do on it, is, mm. is kind of sharing your knowledge and experience. We could be Rich and Judy's book club. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I can be the patronising wanker that Richard Mayden can be Rock! sometimes. Sometimes. He can be sometimes. He would agree. Rock, like you. Yes, and exactly. Like exactly. 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 But are you a bastard? Because I remember when I was at school... Uh, this topic coming up in class. Yeah, when we were at school, you literally would be called well, a bastard I, if your parents weren't married. Exactly. Not now, would you? Well, no, but the weird thing for me was I was in a class, secondary school, we all talked about it, and we discovered that me, from a single... I was the only one without parents together, whose mother I knew was gay, my friends didn't. Um, I was the only one who wasn't a bastard, because I was born in wedlock. Oh, yeah. Bizarrely. And m many of my friends were bastards, so of course we all ran around going, ah, you're a bastard, and I felt really... It was, it was one of the rare occasions I was like... I'm not a bastard. It was quite joyfully said, though, wasn't it? It was like, it wasn't, yes. it wasn't said nastily. Who's a bastard here? Are you a bastard? And bastard, for anyone who doesn't know, is, the original, was, was the original the term for someone born out of wedlock, wasn't it? No, that was the term. Bastardo. I mean... But it was always an insult, right, right from the Oh, beginning. yeah, because it was kind of... Cause I think it came from royalty, didn't it? It was the yeah. bastard son of such yeah. and such. The idea yeah. being that you were sort of not legitimate. And that Mark is saying this because apparently this year we've had the highest amount of babies born outside yeah. of wedlock. Yeah. Now, ever, 
recorded. Now, I think that's to do with the pandemic, because people didn't get married. Well, the Office for National Statistics seem to think the same thing too. Oh, um, around 625,000 live births were logged in England and Wales in 2021. That's up 2% from uh, 2020. But 321,000 were born outside of marriage or civil partnership, which is the first time, it's the first time on record that more bastards have been born than non-bastards. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if, you know, are we allowed to use the word bastard? I'm, I'm amazed it's not become one of those words that's sort of, you know, in, well, become sort of... I mean, is it? Is it? Well, it I mean, it's it, not a nice term, is it? It's not a nice term. I, I, I don't know that people even use that anymore. I mean, I'm more surprised if people have got married parents than non-married parents. I love these sentences. So old-fashioned. I love these sentences. Look, Laura Davis. I'm not a bastard, but my son is. <laughs> <laughs> my, me and his dad have been together 14 years. Natasha Tiramos makes a fabulous point. How was your sleep last night, by the way? People couldn't get married, and sex was the only fun thing to do during the pandemic. Exactly. Was it, Natasha? Exactly. Hey. Um, yeah, so... I hate that word, says Carol. It sounds bad. Yes, I think you should stop saying it now because I've okay. said it about 30 times. All right, times. sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. Um, <laughs> but one of the other details that's come out is that the number of people getting married has declined. And I thought... That's pandemic. Well, it is pandemic. But do you not think also cost of living will also have a huge yeah, impact? I think I think it will continue because yeah, of the I cost of so. living. I think so. And I think it will do, do you know what I hope happens? I hope out of the pandemic and out of the economic crisis... That everyone just tones it down a bit yeah, because I think in. people are really stretched to their limit with weddings. And Mark and I got married down the road. We had um, we had the party and everything back at the house in the garden. It was lovely. Family did the food. It was simple. It was mm. lovely. You don't need to go somewhere. All and, the bells and whistles. And you know, yeah. I mean. Some of these things, you know, they'll charge something like six, seven pounds for a bite, yeah. a bite, so like a volavon or something. You just think, this I, is I'm a big ridiculous. believer in those aspects of life, like marriage, yeah. birth, and funeral. We talked a while back, you were talking about this idea of, was it being, was it you? Or I was talking about this idea that you could be buried in a sack, you know. I just think you need to take the cost aspect okay. out. Of, let's, says, let's take the let's take the money making aspect out of one element of life. Coda just, just, just said, if I ever got married, it would be get married back to the pub with only close yeah. friends and family. Yeah. I think we should get back to Return that a to bit. The simpler, we yeah. should do we should do a podcast on that actually. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Because I think people get so stressed. Then there's the whole thing of staying up with the Joneses. Then so many people I speak to say, oh, I didn't actually enjoy my wedding. I was so stressed. I was yeah. so exhausted. Yeah falling out with their part so maybe this will be a bit of a turnaround there is a bit more of a fashion now isn't there for weddings in the woods and yeah, all of that yeah, yeah. um it sounds fun yeah. doesn't it wedding in the woods wedding like in if we ever did get to renew our vows i think we just keep it really simple yeah 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 no that was a plan and then bloody pandemic hit um i'm not going to talk about britain braced for blackouts boring 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 so i'm knocking that out of the title um going back to Oh, wow, look at this. that. That's an interesting stat, though, from me too. Crude oil, still, still trending, trending down. down, now well under $100 at 95 but inflation will last for a, a while, while yet. Yeah. yeah, it's the but lag, isn't it? I, I find it so difficult to understand why we are paying so much. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, well, it's just... No, it's, you only it, using now what they through. bought cheaper. Yeah, just, what they bought, bought yonks ago, exactly. Because um, it will go down in time. We can all catch up. Exactly. It's going to go down again. Of course. This is the toilet. Well, there was this really good economist on the radio the other day. I loved him. I wish I'd have got his name because he made it also user friendly. Yeah. He said, basically, we're in the toilet roll situation that we were in the pandemic. Exactly. That everyone's panicked. Do you remember what we were... all the oil, set, set the yeah. prices up. He said six months ago, this was copper and gold and all of that. And they've all well, come back down. Do you remember down. exactly the same happened with us running, running around like headless chickens for petrol? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. And the same thing. And what they, need, what they need to do is the government needs to help us ride this through so, the, yeah. so we don't take the hit. The hit mm. But they just won't do it because yeah, right. they're too busy fighting themselves. Um, Did you know that France have just put 83 billion to help people with the economic crisis they've just handed over wow. 83 billion wow. just to did that. you also see that they rescued a whale from the river Seine? same no. same river Seine. Yeah. six hour effort to save was it a oh. balloon whale i think it might be um new research shows what type of uh, orgasm do you have oh, as sorry. a woman okay. you should see the photo that we've yeah. got for the well can no, you show them that then? it's a hand no demonstrate well, how can I demonstrate? I've got to lie down. Oh, I see. I didn't see the back. Yeah. I didn't see the... So it's a woman like that with her fingers clenched. Well, her fingers... No, tense. she's on her back like this. Hold my back. 
But so imagine she's on the bed. No, not like that. Hold me so I can lean my back. Yeah, lean. So she's on the bed like this, and and then her hand is like this, but her hips are up like this with a G string. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do any more. Push up, push up, push up. <laughs> to illustrate the perfect orgasm. Okay, well, Come apparently on. women have one of three oh, different sorry. types of orgasms, if you have orgasms, um, and they are the wave, the volcano, and the avalanche. Now, I know this is a very personal question. I don't want to get into the details, finer details. But can you identify with any of those three? Wave, volcano, or avalanche? Basically, well, I think you would hope for a, a sort of cocktail of the three. <laughs> Great use of words, though. Great. Um, would you? A sort of a, a, a mixed bag of everything? Well, I mean, I a think potpourri. they just described the journey, did they They not? described, okay. Well, scientists have deployed, the way they to say, use the word deploy is like this is a military exercise. They've deployed a Bluetooth connected um, vibrator to study what happens internally when women climax. This is part of research to help women who experience zero pleasure, um, you know, from sex or don't have orgasms at all. So there is a kind of, there is a kind of reason for this. This isn't just sort of for pure titillation. Um, but in their analysis of the ways in which women orgasm, they say there are three patterns, a wave, a volcano, and an avalanche. Um, and they refer to the way in which they quote I the pelvic floor an, an movements. An orgasm, I don't think that's three different orgasms. No, 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 it's not. The wave, it, it refers to, each description refers to the pelvic floor movements as they appeared during the build-up to orgasm and yeah. then the release of tension. The yeah. wave looks like undulations that's what I mean. or successive that's a whole contractions. Orgasm. It's not th you're not a wave or a volcano. You are, a... yeah, no, they're talking about no. the three different types. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, then you're, you're questioning the very they're, they're concept. Bluetooth, they're they're the... Bluetooth on the wrong yeah. pelvic floor. <laughs> the av okay, so the wave looks like undulations or successive contractions uh, of tension. The avalanche rides on a higher pelvic floor tension with contractions that lower the tension. That's why it's good to look after your pelvic floor. And the volcano rides on a lower pelvic tension, but then explodes into tension and release during orgasm. Um, they used a vibrator called the lioness to study this. Um, and the women who perform <laughs> Everyone's tasks... Everyone's now Googling the yeah, lioness. Yeah, women who perform tasks at home, this is a curious uh, uh, scientific uh, experiment, were told to self-stimulate to one orgasm and then turn the device off two minutes after orgasm was achieved. And this was were performed re repeatedly over several days. Apparently, Hang they... on, what do you mean? Why do they? What does they have to keep it there for two minutes afterwards? That, yeah. So they were told to self-stimulate to an orgasm and then turn the, the device off two minutes after orgasm was achieved because it was reading their post-orgasm oh. undulations. Oh. Now the problem they had in doing the research was women kept failing to get in touch with them because they were in a reverie of joy. <laughs> So the actual data was struggling Gloria, to get through. Gloria, people were paid to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Where did they advertise this? Would you like to? <laughs> would you like to contribute to a uh, to a, a, an Can orgasm research policy? Can I just ask you a question? Policy? Were you in the title for this live allowed to write the word orgasm? No, I put in the title. It, it, do, do you know? You know the YouTube, female O. The things that can go on on YouTube, but you couldn't write orgasm. No, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Incredible. Francesca absolutely Bastos asks, incredible. are they male scientists? That's a good question. It's a good question. I, I like the fact that the vibrator they're using is called the lioness, though, given yeah. recent oh, punishments yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and kind of sitting alongside that, I've wanted a, this story I've wanted to talk about for a while, or it's an article um, about Viagra. And oh, bro, you're, you're on one today. Well, it's you. You started us off with this and 14 inch. Me 14, again. I mean, oh, I, I have to. It's really hard to concentrate. Talking. I can't. Vi I mean, Richard Madeley doesn't do this, <laughs> does he? Vibrate whoever he's sitting along. Does he present I this? wish I could do it myself, but I can't reach. Well, I'll do, I'll do it in a minute. Just keep it on. Babe. Listen, multitask. can you not multitask oh, to have your go. arm over to the left yeah, and but be you're talking? It would be fine if that was as simple as it Put was. Put it on low. What are you going to say? Damn it. Oh, okay. see, you're going to keep Just saying damn it, right and I'm going to drift. I know I'm going to drift. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 is, it, ah! what is going oh, on you can't put it on my spine. I can't do that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, but this, this story has a serious <coughs> thing right behind it. Really, what the, this is a piece that was in The Independent a week or so ago. And it's about, I was just surprised by it. This is about, and I can say straight away, I've never used Viagra. And... Yet it's something, the idea that of not being able to get an erection or maintain an erection, what have you, is, is, a, is, a, is a fear for all men. But I was staggered by the number of young men who use Viagra, not only because, as you rightly said when I mentioned it to you, the pressures they feel from porn and sex and 
and expectations, because let's face it, you know, the expectations generated by porn fall on women and men, and, and they all kind of hurtle towards men in a different way as, as they hurtle towards women. So they, they're using Viagra, obviously, because to, to, they think, oh my God, I need to perform like a porn star. But also so many young men struggle, have erectile dysfunction. So many men, and they refuse to seek so you laughing about it. No, so it's just, just me too said you need a QVC logo on the side of this line. Yeah, uh, QVC. I thought you were laughing at erectile dysfunction. I was about to say you can't Oh, God, that. no, I wasn't. I was well, listening no, the to the time. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I was just reading the comments. That's what happens whenever I talk about erectile dysfunction. You don't listen. Listen, to have erectile dysfunction... Oh, right, now she ...is, it's like, you know my big thing about how women aren't given testosterone and testosterone is vital for you to have a sex drive. Mm. Nobody would have a sex drive without testosterone, men or women. Mm. And yet it's so ignored. It's so ignored, this need to have a sex drive. And so it's the same with men, you know. I mean, it, it's, when, if you have erectile dysfunction, do you have... You want to have sex, but you can't. Yeah. So it's not the loss of... I mean, some people would be a loss of libido, but with some people it's a It's a, it's a physical it's inability. It's mechanical. Yeah, it, it can be mechanical. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've not had that. I mean, I'm, I literally... I mean, you know, but... I had this from what, what, from, what, from what I've heard, it, it's not only that, but also, interestingly, going back to mental health and how mental health conflates mm. with sex, uh, men in their 20s and 30s struggling with anxiety or mm. panic attacks and anxiety attacks, mm. they turn to Viagra to remove the possibility so that they can just feel oh, that, that when they're in an intimate good. scene or scenario, they can just perform regardless. But what happens apparently is over long-term use, Viagra has starts having the opposite effect anyway. Exactly. It starts it's a to very not sustain. Powerful drug. And the number of people, this, this study showed that something like Traditionally, people think it's mostly men over 50 who use Viagra, but apparently 60% of all Viagra use in the UK is by people under 50. 60%. Yeah, listen, you, you put something that you can just go and buy in a pharmacy that is as yeah. powerful as that. Do they really think people aren't going to abuse it? Yeah. I remember years ago when I was living in a flat. Who was I living with? I'm trying to remember what boyfriend it was anyway. But, um, and we were invited downstairs to this young couple, and they were partiers, you know. And we were having a drink and a chat and all of this. And then they got all this Viagra out and asked us if we wanted to all have a Viagra with them. Have Viagra with the them? The girl what? has Viagra as well. Terrible. Well, well, what, to sit there and then discuss it or all have sex together? Well, I don't think they wanted to, us to have it and sit and discuss well, I was gonna, it. What a curious thing to say. I was like, oh, I've got an early morning. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, um, let's take Viagra and discuss what comes up. But you know, everything... Every drug is going to be abused, isn't it? Every kind of drug that you get. And so it doesn't surprise me that this is, but it really saddens me yeah, yeah, yeah. that people that are anxious, because listen, we talk a lot about the way that girls and boys are affected by pornography. And, you know, we talk a lot about how girls have these, this, these they put these ridiculous expectations on themselves. You have to read um, the article that, um, what's that singer called? Bond movie, Maddie's. What's her name? Green Billie Green. Eilish. Billie Eilish and her and the effect that um, pornography had on her and the expectations and what she believed she had to do in bed mm. and everything. And and I suppose it's this, you know, well, girls now are bored down there and all this nonsense and wanting labia mm. operations and everything. Well, I suppose this is kind of the equivalent of that for what's going on with boys. You yeah, see yeah, yeah. these porn films, these monstrous... Can we take them? <laughs> we've said far. We've said far worse. We've had anus hole, so yeah, I think you can say penis. So monstrous penises, you know, that would appear to be erect for however long this film is going on for. Of course, there's all sorts of business going on to make sure that happens, and the young boys would get really intimidated by that. Well, this is it. Just like these hairless, labia-less. Yeah. Vaginas. Thanks, Russ. Willies is a good word, Russ. Um, but also, what I didn't realise is that after long-term use, also Viagra can uh, have a hugely negative impact on your, your vision, vision, and your hearing. Um, so, really? not enough studies have been done. So, because it was basically a drug that was designed essentially for older men who were struggling up with erectile dysfunction, yeah. it, for the heart. Was studies, the studies have yet to see what the long-term effects are on, on much the younger people. No, well. no, but it's the age thing is the mm. important thing. Is that if they're starting to use it from their, in their twenties and thirties, what the hell will the consequences be when they're in their when they are in their fifties and sixties? You know what I mean? Um, Melanie Williams, the overconsumption of porn in young men is a major problem. Most of my young female friends now abstain from relationships with men because of the sexism and impact on their sexual performance. 
I mean, it's, it's a huge problem. It's and and a lot of men who will find themselves in this kind of, in a trapped zone of trying to deliver on what they think they need to deliver, which is a constant erection and, and sex and, da -da, and being able to perform like this. And what will happen is that there will be ever diminishing returns for them. But as you rightly say, for the, for the par poor partners of these people, you know, they, that's gonna, you know, the relationship is gonna suffer too, isn't it? And I had a horrible experience a few months ago with my sister Dina in a, in a black cab. What happened? Well, we got into this black cab and, you know, he straight away started talking. And we were like, oh. and he was one of those that didn't pause for breath. And he started, and it started off with him saying how much he loves his wife and how he fancies his wife and all of this. And then it, he starts to go into this story about how, you know, they like a bit of how's your father and all of this, but he's been getting a bit of this and a bit of that because of his heart and all of this. So he'd had a Viagra. And so he was telling us about the first time he had Viagra. And we were just sitting there. Once I got out of the cab, I thought, I didn't really want to know all of that. And he told us every detail. And I keep flashing back to it. And I keep thinking, that was actually a kind of sexual assault. To a completely unsolicited way. Tells everything about what had happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I would say, from what I gleaned, mm, it was a bit more than that. It was a bit more. It wasn't just oversharing. It was something else. But what I gleaned from that is, it is... To take a Viagra is a very complicated thing. What do you mean? Well, from this man's review of it... <laughs> Where he was clearly getting off on telling you about it. Oh, I think he was when I think about it yeah. now. But anyway, well, it's you, stuck you can't it. just take it and, wow, you have a thing done. You, you take it and then you get tired of waiting around for it and then you fall asleep and then it arrives... And then you stuck with it for hours and hours and hours and hours. Like a bus that breaks down. He said he was running it under the tap. <laughs> he was slamming <laughs> it in the door. Okay. He was doing everything to try. See what happened? We had to listen to this all the way in the cab. It, it's quite entertaining though. Well, no, it was. Well, I don't know. But the point was, no. <laughs> what I gleaned from it is, it's actually not a very Helen particular. Groves, he got off on telling you that dirty twat. I think so. But I do think that... In that, and I've heard this before, people have an idea of what Viagra is, but it's still a powerful drug that doesn't mean like you're woohoo and you're going to be like some great porn star. Stephanie Walker, that was a form of sexual abuse oh. because he would have been aroused telling you. Oh, don't, I feel sick. Yeah, and it's become now a fun party story. Well, no, it's not because I'm not sure what happened. It's a party stick. But I did remember thinking, God, <laughs> we must have warn him up there. Ah, well, there you go. Anyway, so, you know, we talk about Viagra, <laughs> but there's, as with all these things, it's a very complicated uh, drug sister and relationship with, with, with Viagra. And, and much younger people, much younger people, their relationship with, with, with Viagra is, is really tricky. Uh, and finally, just because it's in the title, you wonder what the hell I'm talking about, scary books. Um, universities are, I can't believe this, it's just always so tedious. Censorship on campus, universities are removing books to protect students. Uh, an example of this, which I find staggering, is Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad, which is, you know, de depicts, you know, an extreme brutal close-up, you know, the details of slavery. Surely we're at the point where now, if you're removing content that's out there to educate it's and what illuminate... Said. He said it's like an inverted racism it's now. It's lunacy. Moving. So we're now banning a book about the real experience of slavery because we can't cope with it. But... Today, uh, it was the education secretary, was, uh, no, the education, um, whatever it was, the head of education, um, was uh, on LBC. And I actually agreed with him on this. He said, you know, the thing is, you go to, univer you go to university to be challenged and have your thinking challenged. He said, what is on the internet at the flick of a button is so horrific, exactly. so available 24-7, exactly. yeah. we are in real danger of backing ourselves into a corner and tying ourselves in knots uh, uh, uh. with this. Because what we're actually, he didn't say this bit, what we're actually trying to do, we're frightened. So we're actually trying to stop something that we can't stop. Okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We're, we're, in there. It's not in the book. But we're, we're trying to stop it in the wrong area. In the wrong area, books, totally. Books, you know, you've got the choice to pick up a book. So often with social media and, and online content, you don't have a choice. It hits you and you've been hit by the, by the material in the first place. So, you know, trigger Surely warnings around a, books, I, I think, think so. personally, is 
astonishingly stupid because even as you're reading a page you haven't you're not even going to be hijacked by a sudden image you're going to get a sense of what the book's about yes. and if you're struggling with it you put the book down if you don't want but to also it. but ridiculous. also yeah you're going to get that and the thing is it's just it, it, it is it is cotton wool it's cotton wooling people that are then going that, that are also in a world where it's hell on bloody earth mm. so it's it's it is it's just somewhere somebody or somebody somebody people is trying to halt the wrong bit of what's going wrong exactly because what they're doing with that is window dressing it's just yeah, yeah. fake it's just fake yeah. care yeah. um reese the relentless erasure of black people struggling and suffering is so counterintuitive we learn and continually learn about our past but ours is always up for erasure yeah, yeah quite quite yeah, i mean i was astonished when so, I, I mean i hear these stories a lot about books having trigger warning shakespeare i mean for fuck's sake you know yeah titus andronicus Coriolanus, pretty bloody and pretty gruesome, but do you know what? Nowhere near what youngsters or anyone no one, no is one used is, to. Our, our used children to have had to on, see on the television. most horrific things yeah. online. Yeah, People have showed them and everything. It's totally ridiculous. Yeah. There's got to be a stop to it. And finally, 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 just as we come out, NHS guidance on period periods in Wales avoids use of the word girls in their reference to people who have periods. Now, this is one of those stories that's published to generate that sort of woke ah, anger and frustration. Uh, I think it's ludicrous that you lose the word girls. I don't understand why you can't have people who bleed and girls. That, that's my solution. Why erase the word girls? Because you're actually erasing a much larger section of society. Why not have girls and people who bleed? Rather than just people who bleed and remove girls. Uh, so that for me, if, you, if we want to talk inclusive, that's truly inclusive. Whereas, you know, I, I get, it's something that struck me the other day when we keep talking about this thing about the use of the word woman and the use of the word girl. Of course, you know, you don't want to use one or the other to the, you know, to the absolute kind of, you know, what's the word, sort of exclusion of any other fluidity whatsoever or pronoun identification. But why not keep girls and woman as one? Because let's yeah, face it, it is one. It is one. So it's and like, it's imagine if one. you wanted to remove another one. That yeah. wouldn't be fair on that group of I people. I think what needs to happen here is we need to reverse back. We need to feed back on the, on the sense of injustice that's happening around, you know, and in consideration towards, you know, uh, you know different pronouns and different forms of self-identification. We need but to flip to that around but, and remember that you have a right to identify as a girl and a woman too. So let's, have, let's include it in the umbrella term. So don't... don't publish these documents that removes girl and woman for fear that you're offending a, a section of society, don't offend that section of society by referring to them as people who bleed, and include girls and women. Yeah. Simple. Pink lady, I worry about our seemingly depleting intelligence. It's the intellectual, we are intellectually rudderless. We are intellectually rudderless. We are de once you remove the meaning of certain words completely, we are in dangerous territory. We really are. We're in, mm. in a, culturally and intellectually, we're, we're doomed. Forget, forget all of the kind of global strife. Just our capacity to think and challenge is just sad. It frightens me. That was a really long one. Yeah. <laughs> As the vicar said to the bishop. <laughs> Have a lovely day, guys, and we'll see you later with something.